I have been to a hostess club, or as they call it in Japan, Kyabakura, which is short for Kyabare Kurabu, Cabaret Club. Uh, this is uh, something that I don't think I knew existed at all before a little game like, called Yakuza. And uh, it was because of my uh, well-documented love for that uh, series of games and uh, fascination of anything contained therein that my friend in Japan, uh, on the last f uh, my last trip to Tokyo before moving back to Sweden, said that I'm gonna take you out to uh, Kebakura before you leave because you have to uh, experience that. So yeah, uh, we did. However, there was a bit of a process before we actually uh, went there. Like in Yakuza, even though in up to Yakuza 6 you don't have to go there, but they exist. You, we went to those um, uh, free information stores. Stores not the right word. It's it's not a booth either, but it's like one room. It has posters on the wall. It's like one guy working there uh, with one of those happy coats, and they have like a laptop and a notepad. Maybe that's pretty much it. Uh, which was, it's called the Murio Anaijo, or a free guidance place or something like that. They have all the information on the um, hostess clubs and other s stuff in the area. Uh, the area we were in was not Kabukicho, like in Yakuza, it was uh, where my hostel was in Gotanda, which is in Shinagawa-ku. Uh, this place also has like a Fuzoku, or a, like sex industry area, although it's much, much, much smaller than uh, Kabukicho, which is kind of the hub of that stuff in Tokyo. There weren't that many establishments there, actually. There was most of the people, walk, the catches, walking around on the street, like, come to our place, come to our place. And most of those were kind of like uh, underground, shady massage places, um, which uh, was not on the table, so to speak. In, in general, those catch-type people, we don't really... We don't go to the Raven home anymore. <laughs> Basically, we, we, but anyway, we went to that in information place, and uh, as we looked at all the, the options and, and uh, regular information, I also took the chance to ask them, like, how do you make money from, from whole, having this thing? Of course, you're not spending a lot, but still, uh, who pays your salary, basically? And uh, it's the actual shops, because uh, this place does advertisement for them. It gets them customers. So they get basically some kind of money from every establishment that they make uh, advertisements for so it's um, pretty simple when I thought about it anyway then we looked at all the options and uh, for the hostess clubs and that kind of place there was a bit of a range and it's pretty interesting actually because the, the most I would say the price goes up with um, number uh, amounts of services uh, special gimmicks and the youth of the women working there. The, the younger the girls are, the more expensive it is. And by young, I mean 18. The like 18 to 22 or whatever was the most expensive because are the, the, those are the most glamorous, the most like, wow, they're, they gotta be the most beautiful. And when they're like 30 to 35 or something, that's like, yeah, that then it gets cheap. But interestingly enough, there are also, when you go like up to 45 to 50 or something, then you get into this thing called Jukujo. Which is, which is kind of like a cougar and they have their own hostess clubs so kind of like a woman is at 18 they're super popular and then they get less and less popular as they get to like 30 something and then like 40 then no one wants to know about them and then 45 40 45 50 whatever then they, they shoot up in in value again <laughs> kind of interesting but yeah uh I think the most expensive place that I saw there on the walls, whatever, was this like bikini place, which opened at like 10, and it was maybe something like 10 to 12,000 yen per, for an hour. And you know, I think it was like Nomi Hodai, and for that you can drink how much, however much you want. But uh, and then there's there's also ones where you can touch the women. At the regular place, certainly one the one we went to, you can't touch them. Uh, but if you go to those places you can. Uh, it's not sex because that's you know uh, still illegal uh, to sell, but uh, well or rent. But yeah, there are touching places. Anyway, those were pretty expensive. The one we ended up going to was called Pub Tiara, and they had women that were I think late twenties or really early thirties or something. Uh, not not too old and not too and not, certainly not young, but whatever. That I mean. For me, I don't care really. 
but they were i think we were also discussing like not me but they they were discussing like okay so this place has what kind of girls do they have do they have japanese or do they have foreigners because that's the thing i learned that's why i learned from yakuza 4 mainly is that they do import uh, not hopefully not that nefarious but yeah they have people coming in from you know thailand china whatever and uh well, especially china probably in korea like sort of posing as japanese but then so we went to a place where they were uh, as far as i know uh true japanese um and you know are the girls you have at this place are they good looking it's like yeah they, they are they said and it's like yeah anyway we went there and then we walk it's a pretty small place on the fourth floor i uh, walked in they had maybe three or four one of those uh, those like half circle sofas with like a round little round table and you have a couple waiters with the uh, white shirt um classic really the um they look like croupiers that uh, or whatever they're also called that casinos there were sort of waiters and funnily enough they're called boy <laughs> so yeah we sat down the, when i when we walked in i think there was one guy with a hostess sitting in a corner uh all the walls are kind of dark by the way um i don't remember it not it wasn't one of the glamorous places like you see in the games but it was you know it wasn't shabby either so we sit down and they come out uh, bring out two girls and they sit down and then we start talking about you know regular random stuff really and just like oh you're from sweden that's interesting oh you know japanese wow and you know i just i was just happy that i could uh, carry a conversation and um, yeah and then we come to drinks uh for for the guests uh, we have one free drink at this kind of place uh, at the, when it gets more more expensive, you have no mihola, you can drink however much you want. With us, you, you got one drink, and we can only choose, I think it was between like whiskey, brandy, and gin or something. And I've never had brandy, and I hate gin, so it's like, well, I don't really want it at all, but fine, let's just have whiskey then. But, you know, I, I said like, oh, I don't really drink, so, so they watered it down, and it was like, but the way they did it, I, I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but... They they brought out instead of this small like whiskey type regular whiskey glass they took one of those tall and and uh, thin uh, kind of like this big in diameter and just put a little bit of whiskey and then just water and it was just like almost transparent and it, it tasted like nothing and it felt really pointless but then when the girls come in after like five minutes of, ta of talking they say can we uh, have a drink can we order a drink too and then then it comes to that point where Technically, you don't have to order the. Uh, you have, don't have to buy them a drink, but it is in your best interest. <laughs> First of all, because I mean they're, they're there. You know they're paid to sit there and talk to you, obviously. But they're also human. They're allowed to be human. If you don't treat them well, they're allowed to be. They're allowed to be unhappy. So basically, I mean, if you don't buy them a drink, they're gonna probably not be so happy. And uh, it's so. Yeah, I, I did, because I, I knew that was part of the the whole deal, so to speak. Anyway, then. In after like, because we paid for an, for an hour, of course, and after half an hour, they switched girls, and I was just like, "What? Why?" And then they also like, so they and they also wanted an, a, a drink of their own, of course. So I was like, "Oh, I see. That's how they get you. You're good, you. You're good." But actually, when I thought about it later, it's also like in the game, uh, because in this place, these places, you go. Basically, the the thing is, you go there. You find a girl you like, and then when you go back there, you ask for that girl by name. And then you get her, well, if she's available, you come back if she's not, maybe, but you get that girl again. And then you can uh, build a rapport and you can, um, whatever, you can uh, you can tell yourself that she actually maybe likes you and uh, buy her gifts. And um, yeah. But she's really just, you know, working there <laughs> to get as much money out of you as possible. So it's really a whole, it's really, the whole thing is really a manip manipulative business. Uh, not that real life isn't manipulative, but um, it's interesting because you, you do get something by going there and talking to women. And like you, like for me, I would never talk to that attractive women at a bar <laughs> otherwise. So it seems like a good deal to me, but um on the other hand, you know that it's mostly fake. But as I, as I was going to say, in the game, if when you don't have a girl picked, you ha you do something that I think they call open request, where they cycle through a, a couple of women before they land on the ones the one that is your match, which is of course preset in the game. But uh, for me, of course, it's kind of pointless because I was not going back there. But still, so I got to talk to two women instead of one. 
They were both good looking, by the way. They had nice uh, long hair and long uh, 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 gowns on, which, of course, I like. Uh, you know, definitely the, some of the most uh, attractive women I've spoken to during my time in Japan. And then at the end of the second <laughs> woman, so to speak, uh, we, you know, obviously said goodbye and left. However, uh, before we left, I, I don't remember if they uh, gave it. Um, I don't remember if they gave it to me willingly so to speak or if i asked her but i got a uh, business card i i'm it, i might have asked her i don't remember but i might have because i know that i would have thought about the fact that they're in the games and uh, now in the games you have you get the business card on the first uh, meeting and then if they you get the hearts meter up uh, you can get uh, like a special business card which has their picture on and stuff uh, I don't know if they have those in real life, or maybe they only have them at more uh, exclusive uh, establishments, but in in either case, I got a business card. And as you also can see, it's signed by the last hostess that I talked to. Her name was Keiko, and she said that that was her real name. She said, oh, while well, she was trying, it's like, hmm, should I write my real my uh, name or my real name? I was like, hmm, well, and then she's just, oh, I, I'll write my real name. I was like, oh, that's cool. And finally, uh, she asked me for my email address. And apparently, because I didn't know that before, but they said that it was part of the service that they take my email address and they send me an email, a message, uh, the uh, the next day or a couple days later, uh, just to, I don't know, say hi or something. Probably they would just say, um, like, oh, hi, it was nice seeing you. Uh, come back to the club again. We can talk more or something. Uh, unfortunately, that email never got to me or she, ne she never sent it. Uh, so that was a bummer. I know I didn't write my address wrong, so she just didn't send one. I guess she f figured that I was going to Sweden anyway, so it was pointless. But it still would have been, would have been nice. But uh, I assume they do that just to have a little bit more, just have one more, if the guy was not interested or whatever, have one more chance to, hey, come back, because they, of course they want to make more money. But yeah, my overall ex ex impression of the whole experience was really that it's not sleazy. I don't find it. I didn't find it sleazy. I didn't find it like um, bad. I thought it was fine. If I would have lived in Japan again, if if I ever managed to go back to like live there and work and stuff, I probably would go to a hostess club again. Or a, not not like I, I don't think I would go like several times a month and, and get stuck in that kind of stuff. But I don't know I would be sort of open to it at least. I mean, I don't know. I don't really see a big problem with it. It's really it is weird. Yeah, it's. Because you're basically taking sort of the dating experience and just paying for it. Yeah, it, it's, it is strange. I understand why anyone, anyone can think that. But it's also, I don't know, I think I, I'm, I'm pretty neutral to positive in my view of the whole thing. But yeah, that was my experience. And um, it's still pretty cool. I don't think too many foreigners, uh, Swedish people at least, have gone to these places. Also, I don't... I feel like I got in there because I had my Japanese friend with me and I think because he asked uh, one of the information places like oh can foreigners go into this place can foreigners go into that place and they say a, a few of them I remember just saying like yeah sure and and but also I remember several saying like well if you're like if you're there that's that's okay so basically it's hard to get there if you're a foreigner especially if you're alone or like two foreigners or something but at least, uh, because I knew Japanese to at least a decent degree, that certainly helped. But uh, it probably would be, if I go back there alone and try again, that would, or you know, at another place, that would probably be definitely harder to get in. So, yeah, the end. <laughs>